Skardak. I'm Dennis Skardak, linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. As an undersized high school player, to playing Division II, to working at McDonald's, my path has been anything but ordinary. While I've been rehabbing, I've spent a lot of time in our facility. During this time, I've gotten to hear some amazing stories from our staff. And it's always fascinated me hearing how everyone in the building has gotten here. And if there's one thing we all have in common, it's how uncommon our journeys have been. And this is how I got here. One thing we all gotta do is we all gotta eat. As professional athletes, what we put in our body directly affects how we play on the field. Today, we're gonna be talking to Jess and Taylor about how they make sure we're at our best on the field by starting in here in the cafeteria. What are we doing today? Starting off like any other day, making a bunch of custom shakes. All right, now I've been here four years and I probably should have asked this sooner, but what are your guys' official titles? And so I am the team dietitian and the director of our department. Taylor is also a dietitian alongside me who um, helps manage our department as okay. well. And you guys have both been here before I was here, so yep. how, how many years have you guys been with the Cardinals? This will be my sixth season and just a seventh. Just a seventh. Season seven. Okay. You're from out here, right? I grew up in Ahwatukee right down the street, and then I went to college in, down in Tucson at U of A and got my nutrition degree. And then, I, similar story, moved here when I was pretty young, so I claim Scottsdale as my hometown okay, at this okay, point. Okay. Um, went to Notre Dame prep, a little Catholic school. Yeah. Um, but then I went away to college in Kentucky, played some soccer out there, got cool. my dietetics degree, okay. which depending on the university. Appalachia, is a, that's a little bit different out there. Out I know there, I was <laughs> out there, I was out there too in West Virginia, so I know all about that. So based on your food preferences, we like to customize based on the fruits you like. So you said some berries, blueberries. Yeah. All got some uh, antioxidants to help with your recovery process. Mm -hmm. Make you feel a bit a little less sore later on, yeah. especially with those cherries. We talked early on about the lymphatic system. Is that this or is this more like, what does this do? The health of the lymphatic system is gonna be a lot of the hydration and electrolyte side of things. So we are hydrating and rehydrating as well with the shakes. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to add the flax milk as well, which is mm -hmm. another anti-inflammatory piece for the liquid. Is that turmeric? Yep. So for that's, that's what we talked about keeping inflammation down, right? Different flavors of smoothies, we try and utilize different mm -hmm. um, add-in ingredients that can offer those same things. So Jess mentioned the flax milk for omega threes. Turmeric also has some anti-inflammatory properties, so we try and use that when we might not be using the flax milk or another ingredient with that same quality. Okay. So this shake, this is something that we're. This is a breakfast shake, this is a post-workout shake, are those different or? This is gonna be a post-workout shake, so okay. I want you to drink this immediately after your workout to replenish mm -hmm. your glycogen stores, repair your muscle okay. tissues immediately, and then I want you to sit down and have a full meal after this. Okay, cool, all right. Let's blend these bad boys up. All right, it looks like we're ready to blend. Can I do it? You wanna press the button? Which one, which one, which one? Four. The science of smoothies. Just like mom made. We good? Yeah, should be good. Oh, look at that drip right there. It's pretty precise. Look at that. Made it into one. Shake tastes great. Normally I'm headed off to meetings. What do we got next? Let's go take a look at how we prepare the menus for a professional sports team. All right, so what do we have here? This is the most colorful menu I've ever seen. <laughs> so basically, this is our training camp breakdown. You know, we feed you breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. Sometimes in between for a fifth meal, even some days on the higher intensity practices. So we really go through and get down to every detail that we have for you guys. Mm -hmm. Depending on if it's an AM or PM practice, we're gonna do different things on the menus. On the AM practices, I always tell the chefs that we have more freedom with the lunches, so we can have a Mexican day for lunch on an AM practice because it's after. PM practices, we have lunch prior to practice, so we have to avoid spicy foods, high fiber foods, heavy garlic and onion, all kinds of things that might hinder your performance. You don't want or us to have bad breath at practice, that's it. <laughs> Cause some gastrointestinal distress on the field. 
So we aim for some lean protein, simple carbohydrates, and lots of colors as well. Uh, starchy carbohydrates to support your, your training needs. Okay, and I remember you telling me about like portion size depends on kind of, was it the workload of the day or is it specific to different, are the offensive linemen eating different portions of things as opposed to linebackers or is it based on our load for that day? Definitely, and definitely with football players, you're not limited to one plate, depending on what your needs are for your position or for your weight goal range. So a lot of the times we'll walk you through the line and I'll be like, hey, let's get some more protein or let's include a side salad or a side of fruit to incorporate more colors on your plate. So whatever it may be, depending on who you are and your needs, I'm gonna give you specific recommendations to meet those needs. All right, I would have never got to see that side of things before because um, we're in meetings and stuff. So I appreciate you taking some time to, to show me how that all, all works. Um, you said you went to U of A. How do you get from U of A here? So I went to U of A and I grew up here in Ahwatukee, mm -hmm. right down the street. And um, I posted my resume online and they found me, they poached me when they built this program in 2015. So the kitchen was all brand new when I got here. It was the first year ever for nutrition services, our whole department. Wow. And they really wanted somebody with a nutrition degree. So I started off kind of really heavy food service. So I was making power balls, parfaits, whatever it may be. Mm. And uh, I eventually gained more experience on the menu side of things. And then I started traveling with the team, mm. making sure the meals were being executed as they should be. Do you have to coordinate with the hotels with that or how does yeah. that work? There's a lot of planning that goes into every single meal that you guys are fed. Mm -hmm. So whether it's what you eat at the hotels, post-game meal, your snacks at practice, when you're on the road, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, Two everything. Two-day trips. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Cardinals organization saw a lot of potential in me. So then they were like, why don't you go back and get your dietitian credential? So that's yeah. when I took the off season in 20, 18 to basically take time away and complete my dietetic internship yeah. where I did my rotations in populations that I would have never worked with yeah. outside of sports. So I worked with really sick people, diabetes, obesity, all kinds of different uh, medical nutrition therapy disorders. And do you think any of that translates to kind of what we've done or is it kind of more conceptually just having a better um, picture of what nutrition is or, or how do you think that's helped you with what you're doing now? I think it's definitely helped me. I had a rotation in baseball with spring training so mm -hmm. that helped me the most I would say but there were some things that actually translated that you wouldn't believe uh, whether it is weight gain or weight loss even though you guys are on such a higher more specialized scale of things I was able to translate a lot of my knowledge to the facility with you guys. Mm -hmm. All right, Jess, I appreciate you taking some time to explain kind of your journey, um, how you got here. Um, I'm gonna go check and see how Taylor's doing. Yeah. Yo, yo, what do we got going on over here? I'm just finishing up this month's newsletter, send out to our entire office staff. It's um, always so colorful and you got pictures for yeah, us. of course. Is it because you know we don't read or because <laughs> uh, you're trying to get our attention? Well, this goes out more to staff versus players. Oh, okay. So this is one of the things I do in addition to helping okay. the team. So this is like our board that we get set up. And yep. So and in person for the players, mm. our nutrition boards are probably the closest comparison to this. Okay. But for all of our office staff, for our coaches, football operations. I feel like I could have used this in college, like when I was first like Absolutely. learning, it, it, it seems like something Absolutely. that you guys could have, that I could have benefited from just learning how to, you know, pick out things in the cafeteria or stuff. You're in college, you're transitioning into the real world. That was a little bit different for me because I'm still not in the real world. Um, what kind of happened from there? Where, where was your first job out of college and kind of how did you get here? Absolutely. So. My first job out of college was actually clinical, so I worked in a hospital. Um, I became a diet tech, so credentials below a dietitian, and worked in the clinical setting, but it was a startup hospital. So I had a lot of free reign to really build the nutrition department, mm. which 
looking back, I know has helped me a ton in this job. Yeah. As Jess and I really mold this to be exactly what we want it to be, I mm. have that experience having started something from the yeah, ground up. Yeah, kind of being thrown into something before you're ready exactly. for it. Exactly, yeah. taking on all these different skill sets that you don't necessarily mm. need to be a dietitian. Yeah. As an athlete transitioning out of that world, I feel like it's such a competitive high, you know, we talk to each other a certain type of way, going from that environment into like the clinical setting. And that helped a lot of guys kind of be able to relate to me. It wasn't mm -hmm. just the random person that's gonna tell me what to eat. Yeah. She's been at that level. She's mm -hmm. been where I've been, maybe not, you know, on a football field per se, Mm. But within that sports environment, she's used to the tutors, the schedules, the yeah. rooms, the training camps. All of that was something I had been through already. Mm. I so do was, feel like the Cardinals like do kind of have like a more homey vibe. So we we definitely have those conversations and relationships and being able to like um, relate. Absolutely. It definitely made me more receptive because initially I didn't see the point of changing my diet up. I'm not trying to be a, on the cover of a fitness magazine. I'm here to play football and Absolutely. weight gain was always hard for me. So it was however I could get the calories. So learning that there is some nuance to that, I think is gonna make this next year special. Yeah. All right, Taylor, appreciate you telling me a little bit more about your story. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sitting down with me today. Absolutely. Let's go meet back up with Jess. Definitely. I think you spelled the omelet wrong. Hey. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for showing me a little bit more about what you guys do and, and how it translates to affect our performance on the field. There are a lot of amazing people involved in getting us prepared on the field. Stay tuned to see who's next. <laughs>